Hello. In this video, I'm going to give you a quick presentation on how to make POS receipt enhancements in LS retail. So any business, whether it's garment, grocery, electronics, or restaurant may have a different requirements for the receipt output or the receipt that's printed from the point of sale. If it's the format, if it's maybe it's the data or if the regulatory requirements. So every every business has its own unique requir requirements. So in this presentation, we are going to see how some of these requirements can be met through the out of the box features of LS Retail. On the left, as you can see, this is a receipt that has been that I have generated from the Cronus demo company. What I am going to do is uh, do some enhancements and make it more presentable. In this receipt, we'll add a logo on the top here. Secondly, after the company name, we will see how to add the address. Coming to this body, uh, if you see, uh, only the item description is specified, but we want to have the capability to print the item number. Uh, secondly, we'll also see how to group the items by category. So for, for example, if it's a grocery store, uh, you, they would want to print the items based on a category, like for produce, they want to print the items for uh, dairy, they want to print items for beverages, all in its own category. And then we'll also see how to print some free text. Now this free text may be could be some additional information uh, tagged to an item could be used in hospitality where or a cafeteria like where you want to um, add some additional information to heat your crocine or some other item next we'll also see how to print uh, in the summary the print number of items and yes the total savings that's something uh, most uh, important for the customer that any owner or retailer would want to highlight the savings and finally in the bottom we'd see how to add a return policy some text which says uh, define some terms or maybe some of the regulatory information or HST number of the store let's go to the setup so the very first thing which I'm going to do is show you how to add the logo so for that I need to go to the hardware profile uh, now you need to select the hardware profile that's being used on for the terminal for my terminal it's a default profile so I'm just going to edit this then I'm just going to scroll over here in the printer tab if you see there is a section here which says logo this is information regarding the logo which we need to set up so it has got some few options say none download epson flash retail image so we are going to change it use this download option where the uh, logo is actually going to be placed in a particular uh, location on the hard drive and the pos is going to retrieve the logo from that path and just print it there are some other options also like the epson flash image in which uh, the logo would be actually stored uh, or placed in the printer memory and then printed so that's another way and also you can use retail image so for now we are going to use download now I have placed the logo in this path so I'm just going to specify the path here so it's going to be C drive jump and That's it. So, and there you go. That's my logo. I'm just going to copy it and dot PMP. So there are there will be some requirements based on the different printers would have different requirements would support different formats, or maybe it would support only some black and white images. So all those need to be factored into while doing the setup and. Uh, then next is just simply the alignment so i'm just going to put a center and then we have got this logo number which just represents like the printer may have a different memory to uh, or different files or the memory to print uh, the logo so 
I'm going to specify one year for the presentation and the logo size I'm going to keep it as normal. So now with this we have done the logo setup. All right, so the next thing what we are going to see is uh, if I'm going to flip back to the file, we need to add the address and the return policy and if so also the item number. So to do that, I'm just going to the terminal card. And if I'm going to the terminal card, the terminal I'm going to use is P0003. I'm going to edit this. All right, so there is this receipt printing section which you can use. So before I go to this, I, I want to mention here that the store also has the same setup. So generally it would, one store would have, a, you would do the setup, receipt printing setup on the store as uh, all the, for, the format would be common for all the post terminals within the store. But in this scenario, what we are seeing or what I'm going to demonstrate is for this, I'm going to do this setup on this terminal. If you see here the receipt location, I'm specifying to take the setup, the receipt printing set, setup for from the terminal rather than the store. So this is specific format, receipt printing format for this terminal. All right. Now, the first point which I wanted to show you is to add the address. So here I'm just going to add a very brief address that's going to be here so this is something i'm going to add in the receipt top section as we discussed just below the company name and then i can format it or make it high or bold as required then moving to the next point here in the bottom we want to have a return policy say 30 days and uh, whatever text which the organization says uh, or has or any other terms uh, uh, or the policies that want to be uh, included as part of the receipt could be added here in the bottom or maybe the HST number could be added as well. All right. And there was one more thing uh, that we had is we also wanted the capability to print the item number or the barcode. So that's something we can select from here. Okay. so. With this, I have set up this receipt to print the header, the footer, and the item number. Now I'm just going to move to the next point where if I'm going to scroll down to the printing section in the terminal, there are two more things that we need to configure. One is the print number of items that's going to print the number of items in the receipt in the summary section and also uh, print total savings. Now here there are some other fields, very important fields which control how you want the receipt output. Maybe you want it only to print or if you want it to print an email or you just want it to email. So here is where you can select the options. And in case if you are going to email only, you can also spe specify an internal email address. So whenever a copy is going to the customer, the one copy is going to be emailed someone to someone in your organization. So this information will help you control that. And also on the left side, you have some fields related to if you want to uh, print receipts in case of returns or if you how to control the printing of barcodes on the receipt. So these are this is a setup related to that. All right, so now I'm going to go to the functionality profile. So the functionality profile that's associated to my terminal is the demo one. So I'm going to this demo profile and uh, uh, in the general tab, I'm going to enable two things. One is receipt printing by category. So this is something like it would print for different categories like a beverage or dairy products. And then the second would be print free text on the receipt. So which is captured on the points, POS was going to print it. All right, so I think we are have covered most of the things here. So logo, we have seen address. This is by category. We have enabled 
item barcode that we have seen in the receipt printing setup on terminal free text we this we have enabled written policy all right so now let me just go to the pos run the pos client and see if the changes have taken effect uh, and i have to do this because any changes that you have to make uh, for it to take effect you have to restart the pos client so that's the reason i didn't have it running prior to the presentation all right so now i have my virtual printer configured and now let's bring in couple of items from the dairy that's a milk 2 liters and 1 liter milk let's from the beverage let me bring in a couple of items and then uh maybe for this water sparkling there is a scheme going on and uh, you there is some free text that you want to add to it to collect some coupon on the exit so this would ideally be used in hospitality but for the purpose of demonstration i am showing this that you are if you want to add some text over here you are going to add it and then finally you are going to i'm going to just put some discount over here since we want to demonstrate the kind of savings the customer is going to land with and then i'm just clicking okay and the discount is applied well the customer is agreed to pay by cash so i'm going to process and finalize the payment now all right good that's printed now and let's see okay so now you see that i have the logo here which we configured and slowly moving down here you see that i have the category beverages i have my category dairy this is the setting that controls that and if if you see the free text which we had entered is just appearing after the water sparkling bottle so that's another thing and next is the item code item number that's also appearing now which previously was not in the format i showed and if i slowly scroll down you also see the number of items here and also see the total savings which is the most exciting part and down below you see you have the return policy 30 days and hst number so this is something we added to the receipt printing setup so these are the things that are available some out of the box but there might be situations where there would be a requirement where something is not there or supported and you want it so maybe that would be a part of a customization you know whom to reach out to so eh, please feel free to reach out to us in case you have any requirements for any such configuration or if you are looking to add something which is not supported as out of box feature thank you for your time and have a great day thanks for watching this archer point video if you found it helpful make sure to check out our website and blog at www.archerpoint.com Additionally, if you have any questions regarding our products, services, or information in this video, feel free to email us at info at archerpoint.com. Thanks.